So I'm going to start here in what is a fairly typical sort of boiler arrangement. We've got a boiler, wall hung boiler over in the corner. The flow comes up here and it's going through this pump. Now we know the flow is going that way because there's an arrow stamped on the underside of that pump which shows that it's going along here. This is a bypass valve. That basically sends a little bit of the water back so that if the pump is running it's not working on a closed system. Now you normally use that if you've got thermostatic radiators all around the house. So you balance that bypass valve out and that's operated on pressure. As those thermostatic valves close down this opens up and sends a bit of water back to the boiler. You don't get that on all systems but that's just a refinement on this particular system. So now we come to this T here and we've got a circuit here which is running along to the radiators. That's the central heating circuit and that's operated by this motorized valve. We've got another motorized valve down here and the plumber's just penciled on it hot water and that is going to the water cylinder. Now what you sometimes find is that all of a sudden your central heating or your hot water will stop working and you can't work out why you look at the boiler the boiler's working but you're not getting any heat through to the radiators or to the hot water cylinder now this isn't always the case but this can sometimes be due to the motorized valve and it is a very simple little job to fix it but you have to know that it's due to that and not something else and i'll show you the way that you do that if this motorized valve is open, if it's calling for heat on the programmer here, if we've got that calling for heat, this motorized valve will open and you can see this valve, the lever on the side will become slack like that. And that means that the valve is open and the water, you can just hear the boiler start to kick in now. And that means that that valve is open and the water is traveling along here to the hot water cylinder. Now, if I turn that off, I don't know whether you're gonna hear this, but if I turn that off, you can hardly hear it, but what's happening is that lever is dropping down there now. And that's a spring return. I, I was hoping you would hear the spring return, but this one's quite quiet. Sometimes you can hear them. Now that valve is now closed. So because it's closed, when I push that lever up, you can feel resistance on the lever. And that means that valve is in the closed position. Now the spring is running it back again. So it's actually taking a little while to close, funnily enough. But there you are. It just drops down and that's the spring closing the valve off. So that valve is now closed. Now, if the motor in the valve is burnt out, if it's not working, you will go to that valve. And even though on your programmer, you're calling for hot water or central heating, you'll push this up and you'll feel resistance on it. It won't be opening. So that will be the reason that the water isn't traveling through to either the radiators or the hot water cylinder. And that's because the motor has burnt out. Now I'm gonna show you how to change that motor very simply. I won't show you on this because if I show you on this, I'm gonna block the camera out. So we're gonna take that to a bench and show you what happens on the bench but basically you can turn the power off and you must turn the power off at the mains isolate the whole system so that you're not getting anything coming through because even though it's switched off here you haven't got hot water or central heating selected there is still mains current running in through to that valve and i'll show you why that is i'll show you what that does in a minute when I take the valve apart. But it's very important that you turn off, you completely isolate, even take the fuse out to make sure there's no power running through to this valve when you undertake the repair to it. And if you're not sure about that, don't do it. Get somebody else to do it. But the great thing is that you may have already diagnosed the problem. So if you do call a heating engineer, you can say, I think the motorized valve is burned out and that will alert him to bring a, a motor with him. He should have one probably on the van anyway, but if he brings a new motor with him, it saves him running off and the bill going up and so on. So it's good to know about, it's good to have a little bit of knowledge of that. Now, I think at this point, what I'm gonna do, that pipe is running to the cylinder and it also runs back along here, the return, 
once it's been through the cylinder it runs back along the return so I'm just going to show you that in a diagram so that you can understand fully what's happening before I show you how to change the motor oh by the way one other thing if your hot water does break down and you need an immersion heater there's an immersion heater run by electricity there some people tend to use that in the summer if you've got a big boiler and it's inefficient you can just switch on the immersion heater and you can get hot water but it's a great thing because it's a backup if your boiler breaks down or that motorized valve goes you can get yourself hot water just by flicking the switch but don't forget to turn it off afterwards otherwise you'll get very big bills so let's go on and look at how to put a new motor into that motorized valve which is where we started so i'm going to show you how to put a new motor into a motorized valve but we've got to acknowledge where we are first and the grapes you're never very far from a bottle of wine in this business so you don't need to take this valve off the pipe work to sort it out you don't even need to drain the system down it's perfectly safe to work on it so long as you turn the electricity off you can see the warning sign there to tell you that as mains voltage so make sure you turn that off at source at the power take the fuse out make sure it's isolated before you do anything but the valve itself can stay intact they used to just have the one screw on them they've now put another screw so you take the cover off and they've got an earth wire in there onto the cover so just leave that there that tag onto there and the synchron motor is this thing in the middle and this is the thing that opens the valve up you can see here on the side we've got a lever now when I open that lever up completely you can actually see right the way through the valve is open and when I do that the spring takes the lever back and the valve is closed you can't blow through it so that's basically what it's doing the motor is opening up the valve and if you find yourself without hot water you can manually open this valve just by doing that and there's a little lug for it to sit behind that lever just there and that keeps it open manually which is a great help because if you're without hot water and you can't get anybody to do it or you can't get a synchron motor you can sometimes get yourself out of trouble just by pushing that lever and opening the valve manually you see inside there there's a set of springs very strong springs actually and it goes closes off now that shows you how much work that little synchron motor is doing they're tiny things and when they apply current to them they just continue to whir around it's a brushless motor so in theory it should never burn out so I'm not really quite sure what happens to them and why they do go but they do go and it's a very common job for plumbers and electricians to renew this synchron motor so you can see there that the synchron motor is being held by a screw now it's just a single Phillips screw I'll turn that around so that the camera can see it a bit better the motor should now just pull off the top of the valve but they don't always pull off because what you need to do is just manually operate that valve just to release the motor from the housing so when you do that the motor will lift out because the cog has become disengaged when it goes back in it captures that cog or sometimes captures that cog but anyway if you just fiddle that valve lever across you find that you can remove the motor so there we are there's the motor removed and what we've got is a couple of little twizzles on here which are just used to connect those two wires now it doesn't matter which one of those wires you connect that motor to so there's the old burnt out motor if you like and here is the synchron motor this is what they call the synchron motor that I got from the plumbers merchants very common thing most plumbers merchants will stop these and most plumbers 
the heating engine is, we'll keep one on the van. And there is the new one. We're not worried about polarity. We can go either one. Just to lock it in. And then just give them a crimp up. Probably a little bit fiddly the way I made it look, but some days I'm better than others. But I've actually done those in the back of airing cupboards a lot easier than I did that one. But it's that easy a job to do. No rewiring, just those two wires to do. You don't have to worry about this end. Some plumbers don't replace the synchron motors. They rather replace the whole valve, which sometimes means that they've got to drain the system down and they can turn the job into a, a three hour job. So. If you know how to do this little job and you can pick up one of these little synchron motors, you can save yourself sometimes hundreds of pounds. So that's it. That's how to wire up a synchron motor on a motorized valve. And I hope you found that useful. I know a lot of electricians have run a mile from doing a job like that. They just never seem to want to get involved in central heating wiring. And also a lot of plumbers just leave the wires dangling and look for an electrician. It's one of those jobs that kind of falls in between the two camps and it can be difficult trying to find a professional to do it. So I'm Roger Pisby. Thanks very much for watching. I'll be back soon with more hints and tips and tool tests and all the things that we like to do on Skill Builder. And if you want to keep up to date with us, press that subscribe button.